Habitat's a great model because it brings together a lot of various aspects of the community. Various groups come together to build new houses, to rehab houses, to repair houses, and we also build community in the process as we try to address Durham's affordable housing problem. And this is a great community. It's really exciting. I think this is a new concept, uh, the Pink Ribbon Build. Um, Margaret's going to talk about it in a few minutes, but how many folks in the group have been affected by somebody that they know or, or love or personally by breast cancer? Wow. A lot of people. And the concept that Margaret's going to talk about and Margaret has, has come up with here is a way to recognize the strong sense of community that that, that club, it's an unfortunate club, but that club uh, has. And it's a very caring community and it's, it's one that I'm not going to talk too much about it, but I just think it's such a cool concept. I'm going to let Margaret talk about the, the way that you can turn that negative into a real positive here, and it's such a great thing that we're doing here. I'm going to cry. <laughs> Let it out, girl. Let it out. I didn't write a speech. I just want to speak from the heart and just say thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you. And I just wish that my family could be here to see how loving your is. Just thank you. Thank you. I just want to tell you all something. The first time Marguerite and I met each other was last fall we were landscaping a Teresia's house, a different, another Habitat homeowner. And at that point I still had not presented my idea to Blake, so nobody but Miguel and me knew that this house was in the works, in, in our heads. Um, and Marguerite and I just hit it off so incredibly well. I had no idea she would end up being our um, homeowner. I, we did not know that each other were both breast cancer survivors. But then we worked together again on the Women Build a House a couple of times and just really bonded. And then when we, I found out that she was going to be our homeowner, I just couldn't believe this. And wow, if that's not ever God's provision, because she and we've just had a great time together. We've worked together quite a few times so far. And I think we're going to have a blast all the way through until this baby is dedicated in late August. Um, a lot of you know the whole significance of this house, but I'm not sure all of you do, so you just have to bear with me. I, wanted, I just want to tell you why and how this thing has come about. Um, in June of 2011, when I was first diagnosed with breast cancer and went to the breast oncology clinic at Duke for the first time, I was so amazed and so touched by all the people who work there, all the caregivers, how warm and compassionate and caring they were, they put me at ease just instantly. And I kind of thought, this is fun, I like being here. I mean, why not turn something not lovely into something fun? By the time we got to the examining room, I turned to Miguel. I'd still not even met my doctor, just the all the, the CNAs and the lab techs and everybody, I said, Miguel, as soon as it's feasible, I want to build a Habitat house to thank these people, to, to honor them because these guys, every single day, they're dealing with women in all stages of cancer. Some are having really tough struggles. And look how incredibly sweet and warm and awesome they are. I want to honor them in some way. And then it occurred to me, that not only was this going to be special for me to say thank you, but this would provide an opportunity for so many people who've been impacted by breast cancer and other cancers, provide an opportunity to come on board and say thank you also. Because gratitude is just, it's such an incredibly powerful emotion. And when you stop and you recognize how awesome somebody else is, what they're doing, and you feel gratitude, what that does is it completely takes the focus off of yourself and what you're going through. And, and you suddenly have this connection with another person. And before you know it, you have built a community, a whole new community based on gratitude and caring. And I thought, this is terrific, and we can let lots of people be part of this and express their gratitude and what could be more healing 
and more fun and more empowering than that, than coming out and working together, doing something awesome for somebody that, as special as Marguerite, and we're, we're, we've all come together for something that means a lot and means more to other people. So I had before, some of you are staying and working this afternoon, which is great. Some of you are sweet enough that you've come just for this little ceremony, including one special friend, Kelly, who came all the way from Greensboro this morning. And I, I, that, I lost it when I saw her. But before you leave here, I have, I have only one request of you. We have a bucket of um, marker pens over there. I want everybody to take a marker pen and write the name of somebody you want to honor on one of the two by fours that's here. Or write something. Just say thank you to anybody, um, to God, because what we want is for the walls of this house to bulge with all the love and joy that has gone into building this house. And it's going to, I want it to look like an athlete who's had covered with tattoos because we're going to have so many wonderful <laughs> names all over the house. So please, before you go, just take a second and do that. And um, I also want to take the opportunity to thank the incredible people who have helped sponsor this, who have worked with us on this. Even though I've been involved with Habitat for many years, I'd never tried to pull together a house like this, and I guess I was naive, but last fall we were having dinner with Eugene and Grace, I see Grace, where's Eugene? Somewhere. Um, <laughs> good friends who've been very involved with Pay It Forward for years, and we told them about this idea, and Eugene made a statement that I have not forgotten. He said, Margaret, do you have any idea? How many $200 checks it takes to get $50,000? And I thought, to, I thought, I, I don't want to do the math, but um, I'm very idealistic. And I thought, but Eugene, it's going to happen. We're going to pull it together because this theme is going to resonate with so many people that it's just going to happen. And I have two things to say to you today. One. Eugene was right. It takes a lot of them. $25, $50, $100, $500, $1,000 checks. It takes a lot of them to get to $50,000. But I'm going to tell you something else. I was right too because the response has blown us away. It has completely and totally blown us away. And um, the generosity of people here and all over We've had donations come in from Germany and Hawaii and California and Texas and New Mexico, Alabama. I mean, you just can't even believe it. Um, I could tell stories all day, but I won't because I know you want to eat. <laughs> but anyway, um, we will forever be filled with gratitude because of the response of so many amazing people. And I especially want to recognize today a great group of people who were willing to say yes and come together and be part of the Pink Ribbon Build Committee. And Diane Amato, just raise your hand, honey. Be proud. <laughs> Diane Amato, Dale Strayhorn, Emily Beglane, my sweet Miguel, um, Chris, <laughs> couldn't do it without him. Chris Holiday, I don't think is here yet. She was going to try to get by, but she has two little kids. Um, and even though she's unofficial and doesn't live here, my daughter Myra stepped in. She helped out so much with fundraising because she understands about social media, the things that young people know about that. <laughs> I didn't really know about that much. She's been amazing. So thank you to all of you all for coming by our side and saying, yes, we believe this idea is great and it can happen. Um, I also want to say a special thank you to the Fresh Market who provided a lovely, wonderful, delicious breakfast for us this morning. And Johnny Carinos has come back again. They're such great supporters. Yeah. We're going to have a 
fabulous lunch. I can promise you that much. And um, we are very grateful for that. Okay, anything else for me? <laughs> well, before a uh, reverend prays for us, just to say one thing, we want to make this an annual event. We don't want this just to be one shot deal. It amazed me when Blake asked how many here have been impacted. I don't think it was anybody that didn't raise their hand. You know, we need to spread the word. This is like wildfire. You know, spread the word because when the people give to others, particularly others that have not been blessed as much as you have, you know, they get a lot of personal satisfaction. And we have to be the ones giving the people the chance to get personal satisfaction in helping those less fortunate. Okay, so please spread the word. There are pamphlets on the table over there about the pink ribbon concept. Take one with you, take five. If you need more, let us know. We'll give it to you, okay? Well, and on that, you know, there are a lot of people say, well, wait a minute. I'd rather give to something that's helping find a cure. We're not finding a cure by building a house for Marguerite, but you know what? We're curing a lot of other ills, and we're healing a lot of people who have have struggled and such. So there are all kinds of ways to approach this. And, and the most to... important thing that Marguerite has a house for the rest of her life. Amen. She went through a tremendous struggle also through cancer. She knows that this is going to be her house until the day the Lord will call her. Not only for her, but her granddaughter and her great grandson. So three generations living here. And that's amazing, Marguerite. Yeah. Yes. One more important thing is that uh, this Margaret here is going to be my wonderful yeah, it's yeah. Yeah. Ahmed and uh, this is my house. Thank you. And now let's bless this wonderful home. We thank God for this day. We thank God for all of you beautiful people who have come out today. If we could spread this spirit of volunteerism around the world, what a better place this would be. You are to be commended for the great work that you're doing here. Although it's work that has been done that is physical, it is also work that is being done that is spiritual. You're healing the spirit of those who find themselves with no hope and sometimes no one to turn to. But you are here. You show your love, you show your work, you show your time, you give up your talent, and you are to be commended for that. God is going to bless everything that you allow your heart and mind to do because of your selfless sacrifice to help others to come out this day. A great poet once wrote, so long as their homes to which men turn to at the close of the day, so long as their homes where children and women stay, if love and loyalty and faith be found across the window sills, a stricken nation can recover from all of its grievous ills. So long as their homes where fires burn and there is bread, so long as there are homes where lamps are lit and prayers are said. Although people falter through the dark and nations grope, with God, our Savior, we have sure hope. Let us pray. O oh Lord, our help in ages past, our hope for years to come, our shelter from the stormy blast, and our eternal home. Father God, we thank you for this day. We thank you for the family. We thank you for the volunteers. We thank you for those who you allowed to place this inception into their heart to bring forth this great day and this great time of celebration. We pray now, God, as they continue the work that is set before them, that you will guide every hammer, allow every screw to be placed in place, keep them safe from all hurt, harm, and danger, Send your angels, Lord, to watch over them as they work in this place today. God, we thank you for this day, and we bless your holy name. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. 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 And amen.